Okay, welcome back to Munro Live. Uh, I'm here today with Southfield Fire Department with Patrick and Rick, and we're going to take a look at a, uh, one of the first responders' safety uh, pieces of safety equipment. So this is the emergency plug. Uh, the emergency plug is designed to disable a vehicle. So the idea is you plug this into an electric vehicle, and it should put the vehicle in park and disable the vehicle as well, making it safer for first responders. Patrick, wonder if you can give us a couple of minutes, just tell us your background, what you do, and uh, what you do for the fire department. Yeah, so I'm actually a, a captain and, and firefighter training officer in Troy, Michigan, um, but I'm also a mechanical engineer. I've been doing both since about 2006. Uh, probably for the last 13 years or so, I've been working in advanced development for the auto industry. And since about 2019, I started into electric vehicles, really the battery box, the battery structure of the electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, Recently, in 2021, I started a training program, a training company, uh, Stash Training, uh, where I travel really the Great Lakes region, and I, uh, I let firefighters know how to handle incidents involving electric vehicles and other f uh, fire ground technical topics. Could you go through the startup procedure and see, tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so the emergency plug, the first thing you do is you press this button on the top, and it starts going through a self-check procedure where you're going to see some flashing lights. As soon as it comes on solid green, Right now, sorry, as soon as it comes onto a flashing green, that's when the actual plug is ready to go. Um, as far as the emergency plug, the way it works, this right here will plug into most vehicles in the US, and then they have an adapter right here that goes on, and this allows it to plug into a Tesla. So, can we go ahead and uh, try it on the, the Tesla we have here? Yeah. So the first thing you're going to do is open the charge port for the Tesla. As soon as you plug it in, the Tesla will think it's charging. It should turn blue. That means the communication has been made with the car. The vehicle thinks it's charging at this point in time, and everything should be disabled on it. If this vehicle were, were in drive, it, it will switch over to park and should turn itself off. So we've got the emergency plug plugged in at the moment at the back. So we're in the vehicle. We've got the key here and we're going to see if we, we can put it in drive. Unable, oh, I'll get unable to charge. So it knows there's something trying to charge, but no power's coming in, but it won't put me, it won't let me put it in drive. Try reverse as well. Nope, nothing, it's in park. So when this vehicle is off for the Tesla, it's in park, you push right here, it'll allow the charge port to open up. Uh, the unfortunate thing is when the vehicle's in drive or when the vehicle's on, this tar charge port will actually stay shut. You won't be able to open it up. Uh, however, the, the uh, emergency plug gives us some plastic tools uh, to allow us to pry these open um, and get the charge port open. I'm not going to do it on this one because I don't want to break their car. So with the Rivian, you just press right here. It opens up. It's going to take a moment to communicate with the vehicle, let the vehicle know it's charging, and now it's turned blue. It should disable, should have disabled the vehicle. Okay, plug is in. Charger plug not fully connected, so it's seeing an error, and again, it won't let me put in drive or reverse. So we're going to try, try the same process on the the Ford Lightning. Uh, we expect something slightly different because the charge port door is actually manual; it's not controlled by the vehicle at all. So. There and open go. up the charge port door and plug it in. And we wait for a blue light that shows we've got uh, communication with the vehicle. There you go. One interesting thing with this is the Ford Lightning is actually showing a charging fault. Uh, and that's because the, the vehicle is not actually getting power. It just thinks it's uh, plugged into a charger. Okay, we're back in the Lightning. We're going to put it in drive and then plug the plug in, the emergency plug in and see if it switches the vehicle off. So into drive. Yep, went straight in the park. So we're going to tr try now just to get the, the lightning to creep forward, put the emergency plug in and see if it brings the vehicle to a halt. So into drive and, oops, oops sorry. <laughs> yeah, that stopped. Okay, that's in drive, you ready? Yep. Gonna try and creep it forward. Yep. 
Sounds expensive, right? <laughs> <laughs> so today we looked at three different vehicles, a Tesla Rivian 4. We tried the emergency plug. Uh, it seems to work as it says on the box. Um, it, I'm sure it's a good aid for the firefighters. Uh, yeah. Some little quirks on different vehicles, but it seems to do what it's, it's supposed to. Now, why it's important is a lot of these vehicles don't necessarily have an off switch. For example, the Tesla, the only way to turn that vehicle off is just to get out and walk away from the vehicle. If you've got an emergency situation, somebody's trapped in the vehicle, we need to disable that vehicle, make sure it's in park uh, before we start operating that vehicle. So it's very important to have some type of tool to disable these vehicles, and it seems to work quite well. So, so what are the, the unique challenges you have when it's an EV fire compared to a regular gasoline or diesel fire? So it really depends on what's on fire. If you've got an electric vehicle, if it's the internal, the passenger compartment that's on fire, that high voltage battery isn't involved, it's a traditional vehicle fire. It's a couple hundred gallons of water, 15 minutes, 20 minutes on scene, wrap things up, uh, everybody goes home. It's, it's a quick job. If that high voltage battery is on fire, that's where things get very complicated. Uh, there's a lot of energy in the batteries. Uh, the batteries are sealed up in a watertight, fireproof box, essentially, under the vehicle, very hard to get to. Um, basically, it depends on what type of access we have. If this vehicle just hit a tree, for example, uh, ripped open the whole side of the vehicle, we got great access to the inside of the vehicle. At that point, I should say the inside of the battery itself, we can flood it with water. Hopefully, the fire goes out fairly quickly. However, if it's trapped inside that box, it's very difficult to access it's going to be a very long drawn out incident. A lot of fire departments are spending four, six, eight hours on scene, 20, 30, 40, 60,000 gallons of water. It's not really doing anything. Uh, right now they're saying the best thing to do, get the vehicle away from any exposure, any building, any other cars, uh, let it burn. Should take about an hour, hour and a half. It'll burn through all the material in that battery. Uh, then they can do a little bit of mop up, extinguish the rest of the fire and be done with the, the incident. It's a really tough situation to deal with right now. Yep. So we're just wrapping up at Southfield Fire Department. I want to thank, thank uh, Tony and Rick uh, and the whole team here at Southfield Fire Department for being gracious hosts. Uh, let us use their facility to try out a few things and get some good, uh, good video for Monroe Live. So thank you guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.